Berlin, February 26, 1920. The Meyermaus Theater is premiering a new film from renowned German filmmaker Robert Wien. The film is The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. The film would go on to become an enormous hit worldwide and boost the careers of everyone associated with it. However, what Veen and everyone else in that theater weren't aware of at the time was that The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari would pioneer a movement in German film, a movement called German Expressionism. German Expressionism would not only change the German approach to cinema, but would change the entire world's approach too. German Expressionism has many definitions and elements, but most film scholars agree that almost all German Expressionist films have sets that warp reality, extreme camera angles, dark subject matter, deep shadows, and high contrast lighting. To understand how the German Expressionism film movement came to be, we must go back a couple years. It's important to note that German Expressionism was not limited to film. It touched about every artistic medium that existed. Film was one of the last mediums to incorporate German Expressionism into it. The movement actually started before the First World War. It was primarily found in German paintings. These works primarily depicted distorted realities of objects and people. The distortion was usually done for symbolic reasons. Many of these pieces also have lots of vibrant colors. In 1916, during the height of World War I, Germany banned all foreign films from circulation. This proposed a problem for film distributors because more than 70% of films shown in Germany at the time were foreign films. This caused an influx in German film production. They needed content and they needed it fast, and they were willing to take chances. On November 18, 1918, the First World War ends, scarring an entire generation and leaving Germany in economic and social ruin. Many post-war artists were veterans of the war and had trouble coping with the conflict they had gone through. Expressionist works took on a darker tone. Many substituted their vibrant colors with black and white. These events are what led to the production of The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Although the film is not about World War I, the post-war angst the German people felt is littered throughout it. The film is about a mystic named Caligari who uses a sleepwalker to commit an assortment of crimes. The film is a visual playground of dark imagery meant to invoke a feeling of uneasiness from the viewer. This is very apparent from the film's set and lighting designs. All the buildings in the film go against modern conventions of architecture. Furniture is disproportionate, objects bend at weird angles, windows are anything but square, and symmetry is hardly anywhere. This film is one of the first examples of creating an atmosphere for the viewer. It relied on both its antagonist and setting to invoke feelings of dread rather than just the antagonist, which is what most of the film's predecessors did. This distortion of reality represented the post-war trauma of the German people. The horrors they had witnessed were beyond any other comprehension. The idyllic worldview they held so close to their hearts was discovered to be a fallacy. German film historian Stephen Brockman states that the film is about an entire world that is possibly out of balance. Shadows are a common motif through the film. Not only do we see the shadows of the characters, but shadows are even painted on the sets. Even the more sinister characters have movements that resemble shadows moving across objects. The constant presence of darkness also expresses the internal fears that the German people had from not only the war, but for their economy too. The currency was diminishing quickly due to the demands of the Treaty of Versailles, and many were waiting for the collapse to occur. The extensive use of symbolism throughout the film is unlike anything done previously in movies of this era, a practice now commonplace amongst all contemporary films. Caligari was one of the few films to be allowed for international exhibition at the time. International viewers were fascinated by the twisted world Veen and his crew created. It felt like being immersed in a nightmare rather than living in the moment. Up until this point, most films depicted reality. This broke new ground and many German filmmakers were ready to further explore it. German filmmakers were able to probe into the public psyche whilst telling magnificent stories. Two of the most prominent German Expressionist filmmakers were F.W. Murnau and Fritz Lang. Today, Murnau is most renowned for his 1922 German Expressionist masterpiece, Nosferatu, the earliest surviving adaptation of Dracula. The film retained many stylistic elements showcased in Caligari. However, the antagonist Nosferatu represented disease. In the film, the Count arrives in Wisburg with rats and spreads the plague amongst its people. The plague causes panic. Although the original Dracula character represented the Victorian-era people's fear for venereal disease, Nosferatu undeniably represents the fear brought on by the recent worldwide influenza pandemic. At first glance, the shadows in the film allude to the audience of the nefarious act Nosferatu is about to commit. However, it also embodies the unknown presence of Nosferatu. Even when he's not in the room, he is feared much like influenza. Other German Expressionist masterpieces by Murnau that showcase German Expressionism include The Haunted Castle, Phantom, Faust, and The Last Laugh. The Last Laugh is notable for pioneering several filmmaking techniques that are still used today. It's about a nameless man who loses his job as a doorman at a fancy hotel. Rather than telling a narrative story, it explored the mental trauma of an individual after going through a distressing event, obvious symbolism for the many World War I soldiers who suffered from shell shock. The film also has no inner titles, a rarity of films at the time. Inner titles included dialogue, which were essential for explaining the plot to the viewer. But Murnau thought that the body language of the actors should solely carry the film. The film is more famous for pioneering elaborate camera 
camera movements. Up until this point, tilts and pans were the extent of camera movements in film. This film showcases more radical movements, which was called the Unchained Camera. The film specifically showcased tracking and point of view shots. These moves are abundant in films today and were created by cinematographer Karl Freund and director F.W. Murnau. The films of Fritz Lang delved even further into the German people's fears and insecurities. His film Destiny explored the inevitability of death and Dr. Mabuse the Gambler presented post-war Germany as a dystopian-like landscape that anyone could take advantage of. However, it is his 1927 masterwork Metropolis that pushed the boundaries of expressionism and filmmaking in general. Consider the grandfather of science fiction films, Metropolis is often cited as the greatest silent film ever made. It takes place in a futuristic city where there is a divide between the working class and the elite. Tensions between the classes mount as a search for a mediator between the two is sought after. Never before was there a depiction of a futuristic world to this degree. Its complex special effects forever changed filmmakers' approach to science fiction. Metropolis is often seen as a special effects marvel, and many classify it solely as a science fiction film, but the German expressionist style is stamped all over it. There is a clear political message in the film's plot, and Lang's outward message is nothing new. However, using visuals to reinforce it is why it stands out as an important film. Lang wanted to explore the various ways humanity can be stripped away from such progress. The workers' humanity is stripped away due to their intense working conditions, and the elites are stripped by them giving into their desire and relying heavily on carnal instincts. In some sequences, without saying a word, we know exactly what Lang is trying to convey. There are many other films from an assortment of filmmakers that showcase expressionist techniques as eloquently as Lang and Murnau. Arthur Robinson's Warning Shadows, Joe May's Asphalt, Paul Lenny's Waxworks, and Paul Wegener's The Golem. The Golem was released October of 1920, eight months after Caligari, and is another important German expressionist film. The writer, director, and lead actor Paul Wegener had actually explored surrealism in films he made before and during the war, but this was his first first purely German expressionist film. It follows a rabbi who foresees an impending doom on the Jewish people of Prague. He constructs a protector, the golem, out of clay in order to save his people from the impending force. There are many shots of the golem from a low angle, emphasizing his godly status as a savior from the people. Even though this film is classified as a horror film, many modern viewers find the film unsettling for its predictions of Hitler coming to power. The film represents the German people's subliminal desire for a savior, someone to relieve them of their despair. Once the golem saves the day, it starts terrorizing those he saved. The power given to the golem by the people ultimately backfires. What they thought would lead them into a life of bliss and prosperity ultimately did the opposite. The golem is not alone in its eerie foreshadow. In the book From Hitler to Caligari, the author expresses how Caligari's control over the mindless sleep Walker expresses a subconscious need for the German people to have a tyrannical ruler. He also claims that the weak-minded sleepwalker is similar to the collective mind of the German people, which allowed for the Nazis to gain power. Some have said that Murnau's Nosferatu is subconsciously about the heightened anti-Semitism during the early 20th century, even down to Nosferatu's characteristic features being very similar to racist caricatures of Jewish people at the time. The Last Laugh has been seen as a metaphor for the Weimar Republic being an unreliable system, causing more harm than good to the German people, and needing to be dismantled. In Dr. Mabuse the Gambler, a film I didn't discuss in detail, the main character, Dr. Mabuse, possesses an almost hypnotic power over the masses, making them bend to his will. He also has lengthy speeches about power. The resemblance to Hitler is uncanny. The foreshadow is more outwardly seen in Metropolis. So much so that Nazi officials praised the film for its ideas of social justice. Lang despised the Nazis' like for his film because he was Jewish. Once Hitler came into power, he labeled all forms of expressionism as degenerate art and bandit, while ironically praising Metropolis as the greatest film achievement in German history. Many German filmmakers like Lang and Murnau fled to America and brought their expressionistic styles with them. Many always cite the direct impact these filmmakers had on horror films of the 30s and film noirs of the 40s and 50s, but the impact of German expressionism can be seen in many films audiences cherish today, the most obvious being the work of Tim Burton. Alfred Hitchcock was heavily influenced by German expressionism. It can be seen in the point of view shots of Rear Window the nightmare sequence of Vertigo, and all throughout Psycho. Blade Runner combines the futuristic outlook of Metropolis with the high contrast lighting of Warning Shadows and Caligari. Not only that, but the inspiration for C-3PO came from Maria, the robot in Metropolis. Expressionist film influences go beyond aesthetics. We don't realize it, but we're retelling stories from the German Expressionist period all the time. There's a plethora of films that depict a creature carrying off a girl. That was first done in Caligari. The Night on Bald Mountain sequence in Fantasia was directly inspired by F.W. Murnau's Faust. Even Avengers Age of Ultron storyline is almost the same as the golem. A prophecy of doom is seen, the foreseer creates a protector, but that protector ultimately turns out to be the very doom predicted. The imprint of German expressionism left on film is much bigger than most realize. But another lesson to learn from looking back at these films is that stories of the present can help predict a society's future. Remember to pay close attention to the stories of today before it's too late.